الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد احبتي في الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته i received a comment which i thought was very important to address or i wouldn't have put it on a public forum such as this because this is a concept which is so misconstrued and is so much deserving of attention because of the way it plagues the umma that's why because there are so many people so ignorant about racism the concepts of race the fact that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in nations and tribes to get to know one another so many people are ignorant of these concepts that every time a certain people speaks about something people raise their hands in opposition everyone the dunya will raise up in opposition you're racist how dare you actually do something for another person from your qoum your people but yet everyone else can have marches they can go and do all kind of un-islamic activities celebrate un-islamic activities in the name of their race and everyone will be silent ahabati fillah one of the people and i don't know because they have mentioned themselves as anonymous but i believe they're a muslim and they constantly post on my youtube they said singling out an entire race for their supremacy is racist in and of itself are you implying that only white people are racist If the word white was switched with the word black and the title red black supremacy racism within the muslim community won't that sound racist you are using the oppression of one group as an excuse to commit oppression against another group let me remind you of who else does this zionist jews and you are using the same language as as the liberal marxists who use such terminology to further their agenda or control their power I think it's probably apparent why I couldn't let this sit. Why I couldn't let a comment such as that which was a, a grazing comment, a comment meant to evoke response and a comment which is sort of cutting. But I'm going to tell you why it's based on ignorance and batil. I responded to Habati Filabe saying may Allah bless you. You're completely wrong and it is not knowledge based statement meaning the statement that you made was based on ignorance why limada why first educate yourself on the meaning of racism that's first this person totally has no concept of racism for them the constructs of racism racism is a is the concept of what we're talking about or what we're going to talk about which is superiority the fact that i'm a black man and i just said the word black don't get scared that that does not mean i'm a racist because i didn't say i was a white man or i didn't uh say no i'm just a human being no i'm a black man i'm a human being i'm salafi i'm from ahlus sunnati wal jamaa i'm a muslim all those identities are a part of who makes up khalid green and so this ignorance of our of this individual cannot go without comment So then I said second realize and try to comprehend and empathize with what is being said. Third, you didn't hear what is being said and are unable to make judgments and assessments because the talk has not been delivered yet. This person has read so much into a title and made so many inferences and has no idea what the subject matter is and they've already re- Uh, made their refutation and their analysis and their observation and their subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah alazim la ilaha illa ant subhanaka inni kuntu minadh dhalimin fourth habati fillah would it be a problem if we were to talk about the rohingyas experience with racism in for example indonesia or for example in Bangladesh would that be racism because i didn't speak about the experience of uh the turks in saudi arabia or i didn't sp- talk about how africans are treated in saudi arabia or in many arab countries or 
in Lebanon, how they're oppressing the maids and beating them and raping them. Is that racism? No, that's an ignorant inference. To say something that is racism, that is racist, or to accuse someone with racism usually has the connotation that it was something of malicious intent. That mostly we're talking about something that is a conscious activity, a conscious type of superiority or preference of race, ref preference, which again, it goes with the constructs of superiority and inferiority. But because I say, well, my white brother is Shaka. I love him. We eat together. We travel together. Am I being racist because I identified him as white? Because perhaps that knowledge may have had some use in the context of my statement. But it's not a context of superiority. It doesn't have any uh, contextual reference to superiority or inferiority. The fact that you talk about the struggles of a people and the reason I say that this is a unique struggle, not just because it's of my race. No. But if we look empirically and we're going to talk about that tomorrow in my lecture. About what has happened to a particular people and the reason it has relevance. One of the reasons it has relevance for me is not just because I'm from these people. But because I'm a Muslim and it has implications in how I relate to my other Muslim brothers, which we're going to explore tomorrow. So it's very important not to confuse these concepts of racism, nationalism, uh, concepts of superiority and inferiority, uh, white privilege, or it could be out of privilege just that makes you feel more comfortable. Because we don't find much black privilege mostly. We don't find it. Because in general, you find that they are minority peoples. Unless you're going to go to the continent of Africa. And even then, unfortunately, you find a lot of inferiority complexes. Which is outside the scope of our talk as well. Due to colonialism. So it's very important for us. Because we're Muslim. We have to look at things for the truth. Not because they feel good. Hey, let's not talk about race because it's uncomfortable. Let's not address these problems that a whole comb, a whole people within our brothers and sisters in Deen al-Islam, Deen al-Kitabillah, Deen al Sunnah Sunnat al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are facing. Now nah, let's ignore it. Let's let them, let, the, let them suffer in silence. They should be quiet, should be happy they're at the table. Maybe they can serve us. Is that what you want? Is that the reason I'm harsh about this? Because there is a relationship with this kind of ignorant speech that are, this person has mentioned with the, 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 what we see in our society, because America is an excellent example, because America is almost the epitome, because it's context, the context of slavery and enslavement of African peoples, especially, and the oppression of many other, as far as the native peoples, the Aborigines and so forth, Native Americans, if you will, or the First Nations, they refer to themselves as. That it's a unique experience, although something similar happened in Australia with the Aborigines. Something similar happened in the bringing of the slaves in Europe and in, in, in South America. We're talking about what we're left with here. We're talking about reality. You don't read a book and have no relationship with the rest of the world. That's never what Islam was meant to be. The Prophet wasallam dealt with the surroundings of his environment. The Prophet Wasallam. I don't know of any statements, maybe you can educate us, where he said he hated his people. Yes, Al-Wala Wal-Bara, he loves and hated for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did he not cry when his uncle passed away, who was a mushrik, worshipping pagan idols? Because he was human. And he was from him. And that's a human bond. Allah gave you that bond. That doesn't mean you have to belittle it and destroy it. And it also means we don't put the bond above our deen. So this is why this is an absolutely ignorant, detestable statement. I couldn't let it ride. I just couldn't let it ride. Why? Because ignorance like this 
It leaves in the mentality. It's going to, it's a detriment to our discussion. It's a detriment to us being brothers. Because if I say the wrong thing in your eyes, based on your ignorance, you're going to come on me. You're going to slander my reputation. You're going to have ill thoughts about me instead of coming to the table as men and discussing these issues as men and looking at these issues based on the book and the sunnah and looking at these issues and what is going on. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, la dara wa la dirar. There's no harm and there's no reciprocating harm. You don't even know that you're harming your brothers and sisters. Or some of the people are unaware of this. They don't even know. They think it's all Ladi Dalan. The average Muslim, for example, in America, the average brother or sister who migrated here, they're not thinking about those things. Most people don't even, Dao is the last thing. They just do it out of coincidence. It's just something, you know, that's kind of nice to do. Oh, let's share with our non-Muslim neighbors. They don't even share with their own Muslim neighbors. This is no lie. This is the truth. I just went to the masjid last night to a masjid I won't mention, which is mainly an Arab-dominant masjid. It's a masjid that has wealth from Saudi Arabia and so forth. And they had pictures. All these non-Muslims invited because they're more into the interfaith. So they're all invited. I don't ever recall out of the mil millions of years I've existed here that them inviting their the, the reverts, their own Muslim brothers, bonded by faith. Al Muslim Akhul Muslim, you should do Hubadahu Baba. But that's offensive to you if I just even talk about those reverts. Why are you distinguishing between the Muslims? Oh, well, I think unfortunately many of our brothers and sisters have already planted the flag of distinguishment and the prag of the flags of prejudice and their ignorant bonds, their bonds based on ignorance and racism and hatred. Hatred. I'm going to give you some examples tomorrow too. I'm going to end with one statement, a habit which is beautiful. And this is going to show you if this person is a Muslim and if this person cares about Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and if this person can tear, even is concerned about the madhab of the Salaf. Let's listen to one of the Imam uh, Salaf, Imam Shafi'i, Rahmatullahi Alayhi Rahmatin. Wasiya, what he said about this concept is powerful because it's a statement of the Salaf which corroborates what we already know. Anybody who's a, a person of who uh, who studies, and I'm talking about studying secular knowledge, being a political scientist or a historian or someone who looks at the social sciences, that they they're usually aware of this concept. Here's what Imam Shafi'i said about racism. And you'll find this in the fifth volume, page 375 of Mukhtasir al-Mazani, Imam al-Mazani. In his Mukhtasir al-Hamashi, you mean, you mean that this is the, 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 the summary, uh, with, of his comments. Okay. Imam Shafi'i said, Rahmatullahi Rahmatin, Wasi. He said, it is not racism that a person loves his people. Rather, racism is to despise others simply because they belong to a different race. Allahu Akbar. How is Imam Shafi? Then this is, it's your nature. For example, if you're a Muslim or a non-Muslim, more than likely, if you're human still, if they're still human, if you haven't become such a khawarij takfiri like ISIS or something, you still have a human bond. Because ISIS, we have documented evidence. Some of them killed their own parents. We had cases in Saudi Arabia. How ignorant, how jahil, how their wicked to sow of the text led them to kill their parents. Take fear of their mother and kill her. Allahu Akbar. Ignorance. Ignorance beyond ignorance. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanallah. Bye. So if we look that we have these natural bonds, of habit that the natural human inclination, you're going to love your mother, you're going to love your relatives. Doesn't mean you love their disbelief, if they're disbelievers. And if they are in the fold of Islam, and they do all kind of bid'ah, doesn't mean you sign off on their bid'ah, and you're okay with that. But al-wala wal-bara, the love and the hate, has to do with 
in accordance with it to follow it. It has to follow it's to follow it. It has different levels, meaning you love a person, this hub dinia, you love them in accordance with their ta'atillah, with their obedience to Allah. For example, you see the scholars, you love them, especially a scholar that you see implementing and you see them teaching and you love how they sit on knowledge, meaning they're rasikhun fil ilm. When you see Imam Fozan, if you've ever seen him in person, alhamdulillah I have. Or Imam Abdul Masih al Abad, alhamdulillah I have. And big mashayikh like this, and, and Imam Mukbil bin Hadi al Wadi'i, Allah yarhamuhu, and I have. And uh, many others. You see the strength of those a'immat al deen, wa a'immat al sunnah. And you love them for that sake. When you hear them answer a question, even how they deal with questions is on another level compared to scholars of less knowledge and less age. And of course, min bab al in the tulab al ilm from the students of knowledge. There's a difference. So my point is, is you love them in accordance with their adherence to the sunnah. Likewise, the bil aks, the opposite. You dislike someone with accordance with their disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That earns, and that is the hub diniya. Wa bugd diniya. So it's very important to know and have a, some idea about these constructs before we make a kam or a hukum on someone. And before we speak without knowledge. The reason I'm putting this person on blast, they didn't even hear my lecture. They didn't even hear what I had to say. They made total, they deconstructed my title. What if it was clickbait? What if it was this? What if it was this? There was none of that. It was just a total decimation. Even I don't go to the people of Bidar or the people of Kofar. I don't go to their sites and, and anyone who I oppose. I never see what they write unless it is brought to me. I don't waste my time. And on top of that, we should at least hear what he has to say before you just Blow it all the way out of proportion. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. We sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiya na Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. May Allah guide us and this individual. We sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiya.